What up, y'all? We're back for another episode of Run the Bomb. I'm your host, Seth Moore. Looking forward to breaking down the Xfinity Series race here. The Xfinity Series qualifying just wrapped up, so we're going to break down some of the top starting positions for drivers. Also, we got some stuff to talk about before that, so let's get all into it. First thing, uh, Joe Lemire, if I'm saying that name right, uh, he works for Sports Business Journal. I uh, had an article that came out that was then posted by Adam Stern about that NASCAR has revealed that it is developing a virtual reality ex experience that will allow fans at home to use Meta VR headsets or an Apple Vision Pro to join an actual ongoing race, Cup Series race, as if they were in the 41st car per Sports Business Journal. This would be unbelievable. I know NASCAR is already in the virtual reality world. I think you can entirely race with a VR headset like on iRacing and stuff and whatever else. I have tried a VR headset, but not for NASCAR related stuff. I don't own a VR headset, but what I have tried, it's pretty cool. You're in a whole different world. This would be cool. I don't know how it all work if like you would be in your own like virtual reality world and you would be able to join into the actual race and be in like a 41st, 41st car and like drive it and get to race against the other guys and during the actual race, but you'd be in a, in a virtual reality world and you couldn't like affect other drivers you know, building a race, or would you actually be in like an actual car on racetrack? I don't know how that all work, but this would be absolutely pretty freaking cool. Uh, this is definitely another way that you can help grow fans and, and make fans really get into NASCAR that aren't fans. The more you can improve your fan experience and get fans a, a different look into racing, especially something like this where you can actually compete and be in the actual race going on on Sunday would be pretty, really cool. I don't pay for the Sports Business Journal's articles. They're a little too expensive. I just go and usually there's other uh, news outlets that reports about the same stuff and they actually, I can read the rest of it. But this is the only thing that just popped up on X. So I report about it. This would be really, really cool that, to see uh, what it looks like when it actually is officially a thing that you can do. Next thing, there was an article from Joy Bound. Can you talk about some of the biggest topics going on in the NASCAR world? And one of them is uh, due to the fact that, you know, this is a contract year with Stuart Haas, that all these signs that are leading to that a Ford and Stuart Haas parting ways due to the fact that Front Row Motorsports now got Tier 1 support and also now they had this alliance with Team Penske. This has been an ongoing thing. It's a contract year for Stuart Haas and they're not performing well. I mean, in my opinion, the Xfinity Series team, they're performing really, really well. They're, they look like championship contenders. They just won a championship. Riley Herbst looks like he's starting to come into his own. A lot of it was good with the Xfinity Series side, but the Cup Series side, it's just not Great right now. They already got him with that big L1 penalty uh, with the 10 and the 41 car. So they're already deep, deep in points. There just doesn't, no one really seems like, there's, there's no leader. There's no one that's the lead dog. There's no one to go off of. Last year, you had Kevin Harvick. Every team for Stuart House was going off of him, trying to be as good as he was. Because even though Harvick didn't win the race, he was competing top 10. He was the top guy. He was top five at times, right? He was the lead dog for that team. But now there's all a bunch of young guys, young, inexperienced guys trying to prove themselves and trying to, you know, move the ranks here and, and trying to get good finishes and, and make playoffs, right? In my opinion, there's talks like, yeah, maybe Chevy. The thing about it is I don't know where they would go. And if, I know for a fact they want to get Tier 1 support, but they're a four-car team. Um, and now they do have four cars, which is something that maybe a, a manufacturer would really be appealing to them, knowing the fact that maybe they could then hopefully – have you know a, a word in a ability and a choice to choose who drives those cars for Stuart Haas. Um, I know Toyota off the top of my head has eight official cars, nine cars sometimes on track, eight full time cars, and then they would have Jimmy Johnson once in a while. And there's also that 67 car for 2311, but they have eight full time cars. They bumped up when they got Lacey Motor Club on board to be tier one team. Chevy, they have Chevy has way too many teams. I don't know how many teams they have, but they have a multiple four car teams, over 10 plus cars. I just don't know if, if, if Strauss going to Chevy would really help him. I'm not even sure. I know they want tier one support. And I don't think they're going to get that. And Toyota would be the best chance, but then Toyota, there are most, all the teams Toyota has, they're all tier one teams. So I don't know if they have room to get another tier one team and really get the same amount of support. And then there's this hot, whole talk with Honda, but they Honda can't come into the sport until 2026. So I don't know what the plan would be. And then to me, Ford doesn't, they could probably still maybe resign with Ford. And I assume Ford wouldn't mind for them to be back, but I don't think Ford's going to give them the support. So it, I think it'll just come down to what Stuart Haas and Gene Haas want to do. If maybe if they're performing well with what they got, they may stay with Ford, or they'll try to look at, uh, they're definitely going to look at their options and see what 
each t- manufacturer like Toyota and Chevy give them. Um, and who knows? Maybe they sign. Maybe a Honda does make it a deal. Maybe they'll they'll sign a, a a future deal with Honda, and they'll just run out in the next two years with Ford or similar manufacturer. But this will definitely be an interesting storyline as we continue to get in the season. What Stuart Haas plans are for next year's uh, manufacturer. So now let's break down the Xfinity Series race. The, the starting lineup. We're gonna go through a couple rows. Some of the ones that notable entries in my opinion. Cole Custer. Gets the pole, great run for them. Going to be a fast car. Ends down with Chandler Smith by like 17 tenths for road to get the front row, get the pole. Uh, row two, A. John Deere, Parker Rexlaff. Great for Parker Rexlaff. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. For Jordan Anderson racing. A small team that's really trying to work up their ranks and get uh, more competitive. And they're looks like they're really doing that. Uh, row three, Austin Hill, Ryan C. Great run for Ryan C. You know, really small team for Ford. Had some fast, looks like they got a fast. Looks like they got themselves a decent rocket ship to compete with. Hopefully that speed keeps up during the race. It'll be fun to watch. Uh, and then Parker Klingman for another smaller team. Seal car team. Parker Klingman's a good race car guy. Right? It's showing here. Uh, row four. Uh, and then next to Sammy Smith. Row five. Sheldon Creed. Runs well with JGR. And then also Eric Camarola. Making a... He's running 15 races this year for Jokers Racing. A part-time schedule. He's going to be in the 19 Jokers racing car. He's going to be fast. Uh, I expect, I expect big, big things from him this season. Row 6, Riley Herbs, the past race winner. John Arnia chat running also a part-time schedule as well. Uh, row 7, Brandon Jones. He was first in qualifying, but they had a terrible turn 3 and 4 in his qualifying. That was ahead of, of Ryan Sieg, who was the top pole center at the time. Missed 3 and 4 and, and hurt his lap time but big time, but I expect... A, a really big run for uh, Brandon Jones. Row 8, Jesse Love and Corey Heim. Good run for Jesse Love. Has some good speed, decent there. And then Corey Heim in 26 car, who's running par- park schedule in the 26 Sandheim racing car. And then some other ones, SVG qualified 25th. Didn't have the best run, but he's really new to the ovals. This is really his first true oval race, so he's definitely going to be a learning curve for him. But, but I'm excited to see how he adapts to it. Also, Haley Deegan didn't qualify great. Qualified 28. That's not great for her. You know, she, Aaron, there's a big hype around her, especially in the Xfinity Series. She, her best finish in the Xfinity Series was at Las Vegas, uh, finished 13th. So I, I expect a little bit more for her. Uh, and this is where now we need to see where Haley Deegan is. Is, is, is. is she legit here? These next couple races and me are going to dictate how, how good she really is. And if this new Xfinity car really fits her driving style. In this race, the stages are stage one, 45 laps, stage two, 45 laps. The last stage is 110 laps. 300 miles, 200 laps. It's going to be exciting. I'm not looking forward to it. I think you're going to see, you know, Brandon Jones to me is the one that sticks out. He had a bad qualifying run, but it looks like he has that speed. And I don't know if Cole Custer has the long run speed. He has, it looks like the short run speed. But long run speed to me will be the biggest unknown going into this race. I'm excited to see, you know, Austin Hill. Can he go with three peak? He won this race, exact race last year. I'm excited to see Eric Amarillo. This is the one I expect to do well, and I'm picking Aaron Cameron to win this race. I'm picking the veteran, experienced driver. I just look at experience important, and he's also in a fast car. I would pick Brandon Jones, but I don't know if the experience. He doesn't. He's inexperienced. He made an inexperienced mistake there in qualifying and missed three and four. I'm not sure if it was because of the handling of the car, but something was wrong there. I'm going Aaron Cameron. There's no other really Cup veterans besides John and Check, but he's young. Uh, Eric Amarillo, I think the last time Eric Amarillo was in an experience in your car, he won at Sonoma. Um, he was good, in, and especially a lower tier car when it comes to, I think it was like seed racing. Um, so Eric Amarillo is going to win this race. I'm excited. You're going to see multi groove racing, uh, top to bottom. I'm gonna, is this where we're, now we're finally going to see what some of these teams are made of? Who has it this year? You know, like the Hanley Deacons. Is she the real deal? Right, this is. A, I expect her to, to move up the pack. Right, if she if you finish thirteenth in a much smaller team in the O eight car, I forget what exact team that was. I expect some more from her. I expect some big runs for her. I'm excited for SVG again. I keep saying that. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how he adapts to the ovals. It's going to be a little warmer outside around five o'clock start, so it'll probably be a near on the cooler side coming, you know, sunset. But it should make out to be a really good race. Looking forward to it. So stay tuned. Five o'clock at FS one. The Luna 200, if I'm saying that right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about all the stuff I talked about, the virtual thing that NASCAR's trying to do. Uh, do you think 
S.A. Charles leaving for after this end of this year and who you got for the Xfinity Series race on Saturday. Besides that, thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.